Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for raising this question. There has been some confusion about what the capital reserve in PUB's accounts represent. Mr. Pritam Singh referred to it in his speech during the debate on the President's address, and I note that the Workers' Party subsequently posted a video clip on its Facebook page questioning why the water price increases were necessary when the PUB's capital reserve has increased from $3 billion to $5.3 billion over the last decade. Mr. Speaker, the Workers' Party and Mr. Singh have interpreted the PUB's capital reserve as a hoard of cash surplus that the government is keeping in PUB's accounts. But this is completely inaccurate and demonstrates a basic misunderstanding of accounting fundamentals. The capital reserve does not represent surplus funds that PUB has as its disposal. Rather, most of the funds are already invested in PUB's property, plant and equipment. In accounting terms, they say PPE. And that includes the upgrading of waterworks, water reclamation plant expansions and investments in water treatment processes. These are important investments to ensure a secure and sustainable water supply for Singapore. Therefore, the increase in PUB's capital reserve from $3 billion to $5.3 billion over the last decade must be seen in conjunction with PUB's growing asset base, specifically its PPE, property, plan and equipment, which has grown from $3.9 billion to $7.1 billion over the same period. In fact, the capital reserve alone has not been sufficient to fully cover PUB's investments in water infrastructure. And that is why in the Committee of Supply debate earlier this year, I explained that PUB has had to borrow from the capital markets for its investments, and it will continue to do so going forward. In short, there is no surplus cash in PUB. It is either ignorant or disingenuous to link the water price increase with the PUB's capital reserve, as there is absolutely no basis to do so. I hope this clarification will set the record straight. I also hope the Workers' Party will refrain from distorting the facts to mislead the public. In fact, having posted the video on its Facebook page and demanded that the government clarify the matter, I hope the Workers' Party will now also post this explanation on Facebook to correct the record. Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I think it would be appropriate for the party to put up any corrections if indeed these are warranted. And this is something that we will look at. Mr. Liang Ehua. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the Minister for the clarifications uh, so that you know, we can avoid all these very creative interpretations of uh, account statement by the statutory board. I just want to follow up with your question, Mr. Minister, about, you know, um, Given the, the rising demand of water, water uh, the rising, rising demand for water uh, in, in the coming years, uh, what are the upcoming major investments in the water supply infrastructure, infrastructure in the next uh, one decade, and what amount of uh, capital expenditure uh, is the, the government is the government envisaging, and where are we going to fund them? Uh, is this going to be from the PUB's balance sheet or from the government's injections? Mr. Speaker, sir, for the period from 20, fiscal year 2017 to 2021, uh, PUB will be investing another $4 billion worth of infrastructure in the water domain. In fact, I mentioned this figure during the Committee of Supply debate as well. Uh, these are investments for the development of the new Tuas Water Reclamation Plant, the renewal of Chestnut Avenue and Trachukang Water Works and other pipeline projects. And the investments will be financed through a combination of either accumulated surpluses, where they are, or and borrowings, in fact not all, and borrowings, because these accumulated surpluses from previous years, as I've mentioned, are not sufficient to finance all of the uh, infrastructure needs, so PUB will have to borrow in order to finance these future investments. So that's the investment quantum that we are talking about from FY 2017 to fiscal year 2021. Going beyond that, there are also other major projects that are in the pipeline, including, for example, phase two of the deep tunnel sewage system, 
as well as the redevelopment of Kranji Water Reclamation Plant and the expansion of Changi Water Reclamation Plant. Uh, these are in the pipeline and the specific quantums and details will be announced in the, at the appropriate juncture. The bottom line is that we still need to make investments in our water infrastructure and these are very important investments to ensure that we have a secure and resilient water supply both today and into the future. Mr. Pritam Singh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, so I'd just like to seek some clarification from the Minister. Um, the PUB annual report for 2017 um, doesn't refer to uh, notes on capital reserve like the annual report on, of 2016 did. So let me just uh, uh, read out that short note that appears in the 2016 report but not the 2017 report. And on capital reserve it says, it's uh, just a short paragraph, Section 14 of the Public Utilities Act 2002 requires the Board to finance a reasonable proportion of its capital expenditure from internal sources. The capital reserve has been utilised to account for the yearly transfer of the retained earnings to finance the Board's property planning and equipment, just like the Minister mentioned. And then it goes on to say the capital reserve comprises the accumulated transfers from retained earnings and amounts paid by government bodies and private developers towards the capital outlay for the provision of utility facilities completed before 1998. Can the minister please uh, share some information on the last aspect of uh, this note? Uh, how much is this amount uh, that has been transferred prior to 1998? What are we talking about here? Mr. Speaker, sir, I think if you were to look at the figures, uh, specifically if you were to look at the capital reserves in PUB's books, indeed they have grown from $3 billion to $5.3 billion over the years. And as the footnote explains, these are accumulated surpluses over the years uh, that PUB has um, been able to earn. But none of these surpluses are left in cash. In fact, over that same period of time, a large part of that accumulated surpluses have been used to invest in water infrastructure, and that's why the plant, property, and equipment has grown correspondingly from $3.9 billion to $7.1 billion. That's the essence of what I'm trying to say. The word reserves is misleading. We think of reserves as cash. But capital reserve happens to be an accounting term. It means that the funds were used to invest in PPE, in plant property and equipment. And there are some technicalities about the specific assets, the date of the assets, but those are technical points because the main thrust of what I'm trying to say is that there is no surplus cash lying around in PUB's books for PUB's disposal. All of it is being invested in water infrastructure already and we will need more of that for our future water supply as well. Mr. Lo Tia Kiang. I would like to seek a clarification from the Minister on the government's position on such so-called PUV investment, infra infrastructure. So all this investment be solely bear by Singaporean consumers to a uh, water price hike? Or should the government also uh, provide grants and uh, provide some capital grants, for instance, for the investment, thereby will lighten the consumer's burden. Mr. Speaker, in fact, we do a combination of both for the water treatment plants, for water works, uh, for the water operations, indeed PUB charges, consumers, rightfully so, and then recovers the cost uh, in order to continue to finance future investments. <coughs> but there is another part of infrastructure which is not charged directly to consumers, and that's our drainage systems, our sewage systems, which are an essential part of our water system. And that PUB continues to receive government grants in order to finance that part of the water system. So when you look at the water system today, there is a component which is charged out to consumers 
PUB recovers the cost, the revenues, and then uses that to finance its part of the water system. But there is also a significant part of the water system which is already financed through, by the government through the taxpayers. Mr. Lo. I would like to ask the Minister, what is the water bond fee for that you charge? I thought it's for infrastructure. It was increased significantly, I think, a few years ago, if I remember correctly. Mr. Speaker, as uh, the water operations is charged out through water tariffs, through water bond fee, and so that indeed covers the operating cost of the operating the water system, but there are significant amounts of drainage assets and sewage assets uh, as part of our water system, which the government continues to fund through grants to PUB. And in fact, these details are in PUB's accounts. You can see very clearly what is the amount that is charged out to consumers and is uh, taken in as revenue on PUB's books and the amount that is taken as grants from the government.